we're two days late because of uh, failure of our internet connection. But here we are, so uh, let's get on with it. And uh, first thing would be approving the minutes. Uh, I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes of the March 1st, 2021 meeting as presented. Second. Any discussion? Phil, you're muted. Phil is muted. <clears throat> Sorry. Under new business item two, uh, there's no second. And I don't remember who did second that motion. Yeah, I noticed that also, and I don't remember. I think there was some discussion about whether or not a motion was needed, and maybe that's what confused me, but I don't know what should be done about it now. Who made the motion? Phil, Phil made the motion. And it it passed, but um, I'm so forth. I think I seconded it because I made some quip about it being the first item of business I ever dealt with on the oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. All right. So I'll I'll make a correction to that effect. Good. Thank you. Any other concerns here? Okay. So all in favor? Curtis, aye. Mary, aye. Yeah, one nine. Okay, thank you. So then we will move on to the the orders or the warrants. Um, <coughs> and, and get that behind us. So um, we will need a motion here to to accept these as presented. I move that we accept the accounts payable up to 31521. I'll second that. Okay, does anyone have any questions? I don't think so. I guess not. All right. <clears throat> guess you're doing a good job, Dave. So, um, did we get a second on that? I don't remember. Mary. Okay. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. So that is done. All right. So, okay, we, do we have any adjustments to the agenda? Uh, we, we do not, no. Okay. <clears throat> so we'll open it up for just a couple minutes for public comments. If there's someone with concern or something that's not here on the agenda. Um, Gordon, I'd like to make a comment in my role as a citizen. <laughs> um, okay. There was a fire in North Heartland off Gilson Farm Road this last weekend. Oh, yes, uh, you heard about that. The, the, there were two units in the building. Uh, one entire unit was destroyed. The other just got smoke damage. Uh, it was an electrical fire, so it will be a while before electricity can be restored. Thankfully, everyone was safe. Unfortunately, there were two dogs that were lost. Um, the Heartland Food Shelf Community Project and Mutual Aid have worked together to be in contact with um, both households and are working. Um, the, the homeowner, Nando McIntosh, who goes by Matt, um, he's doing well and we're leaving him to his own devices and then we're working especially with the tenant, um, Amanda, to help keep everything settled there. So I just wanted to communicate that to everyone. Okay, thank you.
Well, I guess I guess there's no nothing else to to worry on here. So we'll move on to um, to the manager's notes next on the agenda. Unusual, but uh, having a different order tonight. <laughs> Just making sure you're awake. That's all. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so, uh, over the past couple of weeks since our last meeting, uh, the highway department is back to full strength. We have been switching things up, um, particularly through the holiday season and winter, uh, to ensure that we have a, a crew, uh, at least a skeleton crew to plow the roads and take care of the roads. Um, basically keep everybody healthy. We're back together. Uh, now, um, also, the roads have been posted. Uh, they were posted last week, early last week. Uh, so there is a posting up. Um, it went up just in time as um, we were seeing some real warm weather. Uh, I haven't been out and about too much myself, but I understand that the roads are holding up pretty well, um, which is a good sign. Uh, it's, supposed to, it's supposed to say warm or um, actually more than warm. It may even get into the 60 degrees here in the next couple of days. Um, if it remains sunny and we kind of kind of ease into this, that could be good news. Um, could dry out pretty well for us. Uh, of course, however, we're always in March and April, so you never know what we're going to see. We certainly um, are more than capable of seeing snow over the next couple of weeks uh, in March. Um, wouldn't be surprising, so that might throw a monkey wrench into things, but so far it's it's actually pretty good. Uh, coming down the road, uh, Bill has put out uh, an RFP for a buildings and grounds truck, uh, base, just a basic pickup truck. Um, this is in line with basically our capital uh, budget for a highway department. So I would say in the next maybe month, uh, end of April or into May, you'll see uh, that coming down the pike for purchase of a new truck. Um, the old one is pretty beat up, but the plan is not to trade that in. There's not much of a resale value to it, but it's something that uh, I would probably use when I get out um, and look at the back roads instead of driving my own vehicle, uh, which just has about 195,000 miles on it. Uh, I would use the pickup truck. Again, there's not a whole lot of value there, and it will will pass inspection but um it's not in the best of shape but i think that that would be a pretty decent use for it um general administration finance uh delinquencies are coming down a little bit and they're coming down pretty um pretty good actually uh i think that um i'm just gonna let sheila in um, last couple weeks since our last meeting, we've taken in maybe $80,000 worth of delinquencies. Uh, we did send out the first statement in the beginning of, of March. It seems as though there's been a little bit of a hiccup with the post office. Uh, Bats of them didn't seem to hit households until yesterday, the day before. So we're getting kind of a second batch here of people coming in to pay or phone calls or or what have you but um certainly that first set of statements has has uh woken people up and we seem to be uh getting that in and um i'd say we're down i in my update i said three hundred thirty thousand, but i think that we're down more closer to three hundred thousand at this point in time uh, and that's for this particular year uh, it's not total delinquencies but for this year uh, so that's a good sign for us. Uh, also, after this meeting, we're going to be switching over to the Zoom format for April. So we're going to need to, if not next week, the week after, we're going to need to get together for a practice test. So you'll be hearing from me maybe later this week, trying to set up a date that we can all get together to do that. I uh, hope to run the two meetings in April with that Zoom format and then go into the public informational hearing in May, um, May 4th with the same format. We will be incorporating the school board in that. Um, they did meet on Monday. They were able to do it successfully. 
Uh, they did set uh, 11 o'clock for their start time. Um, it's okay if we run a little bit over. Um, they've got some flexibility to kind of be there and wait for us to finish. Uh, however, I'm not expecting um, really to go over that two hour mark. Uh, if we do, I expect that uh, Matt will uh, work his magic and get them to <laughs> get them to kind of move on. And um, Nikki Buck did reach out to Matt and kind of talk about the timing of that. And um, I saw Matt this morning, that seems to be sufficient um, timing. So they're putting their warning together, um, getting ready to send that to us to put it in the mailer, which is gonna be going out um, not next week, but perhaps the week after. And as soon as we approve the warning tonight, um, we will also be putting that into the mailer. Those are the only two things left for that. And um, we'll be sending that out to the general public the 1st of April. Cork's office. Um, Cork's office, the transition with Brian, I think, is going very well. Um, I enjoy um, Brian uh, quite a bit. Um, um, just uh, pleasant to have around. He has hired a new assistant or deputy um, who would um, uh, who has joined us. Uh, her name is Anna. Um, she's very uh, friendly, um, fits in well as uh, two. But uh, Brian seems to be getting up to snuff on um, a lot of the statutes and, and stuff that he needs to know. Uh, so I, you know, again, I'm pleased to have Brian, and I think that that transition has gone very well for us, particularly since Clyde was there for 27, 20 years. Always hard to follow somebody who's been there for that long, uh, and I think that it's just gone uh, so far pretty smooth. I would say the same for the Lister's office. Um, again, uh, we transitioned from Doug to Stacy. Uh, we really haven't missed a beat. Uh, that's going. Well, her and Cheyenne are um, in the middle of, um, uh, you know, doing updates to the to the grand list. Uh, we were expecting Doug to kind of fill in during this transition because we put uh, town meeting off until May, so we won't have an elected lister until till then. But. Um, for reasons I won't get into in public session, we just weren't able to make that work um, between the two of us. So um, Stacy and Cheyenne will will do it uh, themselves. And based upon what I've heard from Stacy, it's it's not ideal, but um, it's something that we can get done. Recreation: We are looking at uh, running recreation programs in the spring. Uh, certainly, mostly, uh, if not all, are non-contact sports: softball. Um, soccer, uh, t-ball type sports. Uh, we will um, follow CDC guidelines in the state of Vermont, Department of Health, uh, but uh, we will be getting going with that. We'll start up at the end of April into May, um, so that's good to see. Last year at this time, we pretty much canceled everything across the board, and we were also uh, questioning as to whether we'd even be able to do a, a summer camp. We were able to do the summer camp last year, uh, but um, obviously we're, we're able to do more this spring than we did last. Uh, really lastly, um, I got committees, commissions on here. The big one here is just to let you know that coming down the pike, uh, maybe in sometime in May, the, the Conservation Commission has been working on a management plan for Sumner's Falls recreation area. Um, so I expect to see that as something that they've been working on, they get solicited some input, they put uh, something out on the listserv, uh, asking for the public to provide some input. Um, they've called around, I know they talked to John Leonard, uh, a couple other people, so just know that um, that will be something that you see on the agenda. And also we do have Steve Cohn here tonight, but um, uh, we need to fill three planning commission members. We do have two, uh, we had a few people respond. Um, a few of them sat in on the last planning commission meeting. 
We've gotten a confirmation from Steve that uh, he would like to be a part of the commission. Uh, also, George Little has expressed interest in coming back. He was once a member, uh, wants to come back. So in April, we're going to be looking to fill those positions. And we may have a third, but um, she was on the fence the last time I spoke to her. So uh, that's not a definite. Uh, lastly, um, Phil, I gave you the wrong date. Uh, my understanding is, is the meet the candidates night, I think is April 21st at 630. Uh, Phil, I told you April 14th. We are going to try and do, I've talked to Nancy, we're going to try and do basically a, a Zoom for beginners class through the library on April 8th at 630. I think she's got something up now on their website that may have a link uh, to a YouTube um, video on how to get on to Zoom. But with the Meet the Candidates Forum, which will be a Zoom um, forum or product, and the informational meeting coming down the pike, we thought that that would be beneficial. So we'll advertise that a little bit more probably into next week. But uh, that's something that we're going to try and, and push. Um, so some good things coming coming down the pipe. Hey, thank you, Dave. Okay, so next on the agenda is to take a look at the um, budget. How we're how we're progressing with <coughs> to date. So it's kind of funny. Uh, every well, most of the time, uh, by this time in the year, the budget, uh, certainly at least by halfway through, is kind of shaped up and is kind of telling its own story. Um, this one is is certainly um hasn't changed much since the last uh, certainly since the last meeting but it's been kind of the same uh throughout particularly in the highway department where we had those three um uh, projects over the summer the martinsville road project the culvert uh, clay hill road and the mace hill road project uh, all are affecting the the highway department uh, we are awaiting still uh, grant reimbursements on the FEMA project, which is the Mace Hill project. Also the Martinsville Road Culver project. So we're waiting for revenue to come in. Uh, and on, elsewhere on the highway department, we are overexpensed a bit. I'm a little concerned on the equipment fund. Um, we are a little bit higher than I'd like to be at this point in time. Uh, so that's a little bit of a concern for me. Uh, otherwise, uh, the winter highway budget looks pretty pretty good. Uh, that ends uh, in the next few weeks, uh, the beginning of April. We switch back to the summer maintenance. Uh, so the salt, certainly some room there. Um, just uh, overtime looks pretty pretty good as well. So if we stay with this weather, we should be should be looking good on the winter winter maintenance. General fund, um, some things that uh, I pointed out last time around. Um, the administration uh, were over uh, a bit on the winter, uh, just on the administration, which is in my domain. Uh, however, I carry uh, in the administration part of the budget a lot of other things that are you know, general fund wide. So workers' compensation is over. Um, we talked about that back in December when the workers' compensation uh, came out. Uh, we did, um, we do, or, or got hit more than we have in the past um, uh, and what we budgeted for, and that's based upon uh, a prior work accident, for lack of a better term. So that affected us this year and will affect us for the next couple of years. Uh, and also the uh, liability insurance has been fully paid. Uh, so that has been, that's affecting us um, since we're only two thirds of the way through the year, we're at 0.66% uh, or 66%. So that's showing 73% uh, overexpensed. Um, 
Uh, again, however, I expect that as we go forward here to June, I think that that'll come back into balance. Uh, also, we've got, um, I do expense, expect some additional legal fees before the end of the year, but certainly not anything um, that I can foresee anyways, it's going to push us up to what we budgeted for. So I think we got some breathing room there that um, will keep us in check. Uh, otherwise, um, some of the things that uh, are over a little bit uh, in the town clerk, um, the election expense, uh, I talked about that last time. Uh, the 21 house uh, is showing uh, an expense as well. Um, and as is the three corners intersection, which is uh, popping up uh, in the capital improvements. Uh, however, on the revenue side, uh, you will see um, reimbursements or revenue uh, for the, um, the the overage in the elect election expense that Brian spent. Um, we did get money back from the state for that. Uh, we are getting bike ped reimbursements on uh, the three corners intersection. It's not 100% to 100%, but uh, is offsetting a um, good portion of the three corners intersection project. And there is revenue uh, for the 21 house, uh, not the, the 21 Forkbrook Road, I'm sorry. Uh, there is revenue, uh, the $10,000. However, 21 Forkbrook Road does not net out. Um, you know, there was about $25,000 loss on that. Uh, however, in miscellaneous, we had budgeted 25 grand that we won't spend on cleanup on that property. Uh, so overall, I think that the general fund at the moment looks uh, in line with where it needs to be. Uh, and the highway fund, I would say the same, with the exception of those three projects that we had over the summertime. And uh, if the revenue comes back in before the end of the fiscal year, then I think it'll match up pretty good. Uh, otherwise, um, we'll have an imbalance and that revenue will come in next fiscal year and um, will kind of equal itself out over the two years. Bill, um, uh, Dave, in, on, on the revenue side of the highway fund, there's uh, uh, right now there's a, there's a forty thousand dollar, forty four thousand dollar surplus from the state. Um, do you see that being absorbed into the fund to offset some of those other items with the highway, or might that pave a little more or hard pack a little more? Uh, so that's going to offset. So we have grant reimbursement on the Martinsville Road project. It's not going to be one to one. Uh, it's going to be about an 80 percent, um, you know, match. Uh, and we spent, I don't know, 60 grand on the um, Martinsville Road project. So that has a grant reimbursement. FEMA has a grant reimbursement. The Clay Hill Road, which was about 35,000, does not. That was a direct hit to us. So we'd probably be $35,000 short uh, or shorter if it wasn't for that 42 grand that came in from the state of Vermont. So that 42 grand is going to cover um, the shortfall mainly from Clay Hill. And, it, you know, there's maybe five grand more in there that'll offset some overages somewhere. But, um, you know, I think that that's kind of spoken for by the Clay Hill project. Thank you. Other questions? Guess not. Okay. Um, so we don't need, I guess we don't need any action on that. That's right. So we, we will move on to the warning. Um, I think uh, <clears throat> first off, um, Dave, do you want someone else to read this or do you want to do it? Uh, you wanted the, uh, the, 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 second, the second part there on the public informational hearing? Well, I just want the top of the 
top of the warning red down down to the article one. Uh, just just as a matter of information for everyone that's that's listening. Okay. Um, uh, so first part. Uh, actually, if you hang on a minute, do you want me to post it or do you want me to just go ahead and read it? Um, maybe both. <laughs> uh, but someone uh, else could read it. it. Doesn't have to be you. Let me post. Let me post it if I can. Here, it's going to take me a couple of minutes because I don't. I can contribute like my dulcet tones, Gordon, if you would like. Sure. Okay. Great. I've been told I have a frog voice. So, the legal voters of the town of Heartland, Vermont, are hereby notified and warned to meet at Damon Hall at One Queechy Road. Heartland, Vermont, on Tuesday, May 4th, 2021, to act on the following articles by Australian ballot. The polls will be open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Legal voters are further warned that a public informational hearing will be conducted by electronic means on Saturday, April 24th, 2021, at 9 a.m. under existing provisions of Vermont's open meeting law as modified by the temporary COVID-19 measures of Act 92. The public is welcome to access the public hearing through Zoom as follows. Continuing the Zoom instructions, note, given the extenuating circumstances surrounding COVID-19, voters are strongly encouraged to vote by mail-in ballot. Ballots will be mailed out to all registered voters in early April and can be returned to the town clerk's office or Dropbox in front of Damon Hall on or before May 4th, 2021. Contact the town clerk's office at 802-436-2444 for ballot questions. Thank you, Curtis. Okay, so. So as as I understand it, we we can approve this this um, agenda for the town meeting and as as presented, but cannot um, guarantee that there won't be a change until I think Friday. Is that the day, Dave? When uh, last day for someone to make a, um, a request for a another article or. So they have until four o'clock tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. So I'll need um, I need to have you guys okay. come in for signatures on Friday. Okay. All right. So okay. it's a bit different this year, that's for sure, with uh, all of the articles listed, and of course voting by Australian ballot and no in-person town meeting, but all has to do with being safe and healthy. I'm so. sorry, um, you just sort of said no town meeting. Um, I, I've already spoken to Dave and he said this is kind of cast in stone, but the very first sentence says, are hereby notified and warned to meet at Damon Hall at One Creechy Road. To me, that implies a meeting. Um, um, to yeah, so Phil, to, to Phil, there, Phil, town meeting day does not go away. We still have town meeting day. You're conducting business by Australian ballot. Yeah. And the voting by Australian ballot is from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Yeah, I, I, you and I went around on this already, so I'm not going to, but I just want to point out that when the postcard came out, People were asking me, I thought there was not going to be a meeting and now it looks like there is a meeting. So um, uh, there, I'm not a lawyer, so I'm not going to try to stand to argue about the language. So I, Gordon, just before you get too far going, so this was uh, due to the uh, circumstances of the year, uh, I did put this in front of uh, council uh, a couple times actually 
particularly on that, uh, not only on the articles themselves uh, in the way they are written, because this is the first time that we've uh, put all of them separate, but in particular, one that not only the first paragraph, but you know, this is a warning for town meeting. Uh, so it's the, basically the date and um, that is by Australian ballot and then the articles. And that's essentially, uh, that's essentially it. That's the legal um, aspect of what we're doing here. Uh, we are informing them here of the informational meeting and we go into great length to provide information as to how to access that informational meeting. And we even give extraneous information that uh, a mail-in ballot is going to be sent out to them. So in talking with them and even um, looking at surrounding towns, uh, the answer is, yeah, it's kind of, you know, not your normal course of doing things, but this isn't a normal course of year. And the more information that we put on there, uh, the better. So really a lot of the discussion surrounded uh, the informational meeting and putting that information on uh, and then going into the articles. Okay, well, let's get to the meat of it. Is there any discussion about about the agenda that we are going to be voting on by Australian ballot? Okay. I'll also just I'll also just throw it out there, Gordon, that um, I did uh, I did receive uh, quite the grammar lesson um, from two of our select board members um, that were pretty right on uh, as far as their thoughts go. So this has also been we don't need to get into it tonight, but um, I I received input on. Uh, grammar and um, I will not make the mistake again of different, you know, uh, saying a hyphen instead of apostrophe or or the other way around. So um, uh, it's also gone. It's also been gone through pretty closely on the uh, on the grammar as well. Mary, do you have something you want to say? No, I was just going to I was going to say what Dave said, although I would have to say that when he said it was pretty good, I I beg to differ with that. Uh, after Martha and I went over and I think it's excellent. Good. It's pretty tight. <clears throat> well, um, so if there's no, there's nothing else. See, do we want to, do we want a, um, vote on this to accept this? Yes, please. Okay. So we need a motion. I'll make the motion. I make the motion that we accept the warning for town meeting 2021 as presented. Is that enough, Dave? Uh, yes, that'll be fine. Okay, good. I'll second it. Thank you, Phil. So if there's no, apparently there's no concern or Done anything here, so I have a question, Gordon. Okay. Um, if there were a change to it between now and tomorrow afternoon, how would we deal with that, Dave? <laughs> uh, hopefully, the person has a petition. Um, otherwise, I'm not sure it's gonna. I'm not sure it's gonna fly. They, they would need select board permission to get on the on the warning at this point, um, which means that you'd have to call a meeting at like. 3 30 uh tomorrow which um i we, um not even sure would be legal um you know unless we warn it right now um so uh, given the year it's going to be pretty tough for somebody to get on the warning but if they showed up with you know it's not impossible to get signatures but um 
you know, that's how they'd have to. <clears throat> yeah, Phil? Uh, Gordon, it's a question for Matt. Um, Matt, there appear to be 25-ish um, articles that are um, now broken out as individual for the various authorizations or programs. Um, how do you see yourself if all 20-something people show up? Um, uh, you know, what, how do you envision this to unfold for someone to stand, virtually stand and present why giving money to Green Mountain retired senior volunteer? Blah, 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 blah. So my my sense, and it, it would actually be helpful, Dave, uh, if we get a list of contact names, I'm happy to talk to them ahead of time, like email them and say, hey, this is how we're anticipating it. Traditionally, if I remember correctly, we don't actually have a formal presentation from all of the nonprofits who are receiving it. We only have a presentation when there is a new uh, request for resources. Uh, and in, and what happens is that individuals come and are available in case there are questions. And if there are questions, then they're on hand to be able to respond to them or, or not. So my my plan at this point, and I'm open to other thoughts, would be to have uh, would be to have that also be the practice uh, that for the individuals who have been, you know, regular recipients of those dollars, uh, that we would not anticipate a formal presentation uh, for those that are new recipients of dollars, um, they they would. Uh, and since we're not going through the articles and voting on them literally one at a time, it's all going on the Australian ballot. It's It's certainly legal to do it that way, but that was the way I was approaching it. If it felt like each individual one, since people will be looking at them, I think, in a different way when they come to their home and are looking through the slate where they can go yes or no, um, which may have some interesting outcomes associated with it, uh, I would be open to like a two minute presentation from any every single one of the organizations. But that would not be my um, uh, recommendation. Uh, you know, I, I, I think. I think again, tradition, as well as uh, you know, practicality. But I'd, I'd welcome folks' thoughts on that. I, I just, I, I mean, the the other question that I was talking to Dave a little bit about today was whether we needed to ask permission of the body for a non-Heartland resident to speak, which is typically the case in a formal town meeting. This is a select board meeting, and so I think you know officially. Um, so I think it's actually at at uh, you know, the chair's discretion uh, as to whether or not an individual can uh, participate um, in what order. And so I was planning on talking to Gordon, you know, ahead of the meeting to to have, you know, that chat. But my assumption is we will allow, especially if there's a question that is asked to an organization to explain their $2,200 or whatever, um, that we would uh, accommodate that. But that's but philosophically, uh, that was my thought, not not have everyone make a presentation unless they were. There's one or two organizations that are new, Dave. Is that right? Two. Two. Yep. Uh, so I would have them uh, have the opportunity to make a presentation. I would not unless other people are asking for, uh, for have questions about it uh, and move from there. Oh, again, if one of the if one of the organizations said, really please we would like to do a two minute presentation i tend to side on the side of of you know more information rather than less but that would be my expectation i i guess my question is this hi it's rebecca um how, is there an opportunity or some repository for groups maybe that are familiar to all of us that wouldn't be presenting but not, might not be familiar to someone new i just hate i would hate it if we inadvertently heard a really good cause that maybe isn't all that public or that people don't really understand what they do because now instead of maybe having an explanation in front of us will there be there will they have a blurb in the town report or something that comes out My my understanding, just in the nature of discussion, uh, 
is that there will be a description in the town port report that's sent out just like there is traditionally so that they can actually look at the report. Dave, is that is that accurate that it's going to be the same as what the town? Yeah, the town meeting report will have sort of like a page or maybe sometimes a little bit less per organization that they can refer to. Uh, and and Rebecca, I will I will certainly um, reference that as I'm uh, talking about the ones that have been traditionally part of a slate that um, the uh, select board has presented um, and then and then highlight the ones that are new. Uh, I think that's there will, great. And there and will be information to talk with them anyway, Matt, then you know, you'll just let them know like, hey, if you don't usually mention a, a point of contact, maybe you'll want to, you yep. know, at the end of your blurb, just so there's make it easy. <laughs> the easier you make it to give, it's amazing how well that's working. Yep. Thank you. Uh, Dave, that's correct about what will be in the contact con in the content of the town report that's mailed to everyone. Uh, actually, uh, no. only the mailer is mailed to every registered voter, uh, but the intent of the mailer is to let people know that the town report is available at the end of April in uh, Bee Gees, oh. Mike's, the library, the school. Uh, so the town report goes to um, uh, five or six places in town, including Damon Hall. Uh, however, um, uh, the mailer uh, tells people that that's where they can get it and expect it at the end of April. Uh, there is a little sentence. Uh, what's different this year, Matt, is on the articles, not only does it say, you know, do you wish to appropriate $1,500, but there is a sentence that briefly describes what the entity does. Uh, we haven't really had that on the warning in the past, and that's a little bit different this year, simply because each one is listed individually. I'm sorry. So, Dave, uh, then I was then I misunderstood. I mean, historically, going back a few years, we used to actually mail a town report to every citizen. Uh, I know we moved away from that in the interest of cost and, and efficiency, and we handed it out at town meetings so people had it as a immediate and present um, point. I mean, I. I, I had thought with the all mailing, you know, the, the ballot being all mailed out, we were going back to actually sending that document to everyone. Um, and I think it's because I, I don't, I think in, you know, to the extent that COVID is not solved by, you know, early May and people's willingness to go to a, a Mike's or uh, somewhere else to be able to avail themselves of that information, I think it, at the very least, we need to have an online option in addition that would have all of that content somewhere present. Um, I, I, I don't so know. Matt, just, Matt, let me just back up. Let me just back up a second. So yep. kind of in line with what we were talking about this morning, uh, we have communicated with the appropriations folks. They're aware that uh, our town meeting was put off and that it's by Australian ballot. Yep. Uh, we will give them a date. Uh, if they wish to attend, uh, we'll ask them to notify us for a link. So we'll know ahead of time if there's an interest um, from a certain number of people. Um, maybe this year there'll be more since it's, you know, separate from March 2nd. But historically, we've only gotten two or three people that have ever come to talk about their particular appropriation. Right. No, I mean, I'm just I'm but but I'm we talking can, about actually getting because because we have sort of articles that are ballot articles in a different way. I mean, I, I guess yeah, my that, only suggestion, uh, D Dave, is we, possibly we, yeah, sending. We, we can catch up a little bit on this, you know, later. But, you know, if we want to spend time on that's fine. You know what we're doing presently, Matt, as far as putting out, we're actually putting out more notice for this meeting. But, um, you know, as far as Australian ballot and putting out things to registered voters, this is no different than what we've done the past 10 years. Um, and actually, per ballot or per article, you're going to have more information than what you've we've had on the articles before. So at the moment, there's more information, not less uh, out there. It doesn't hurt. I mean, we can actually 
in addition to that, Matt, to give you a simple answer, an electronic copy of the town report goes on the website. All right, that's, and I, I just wasn't sure if that yeah. was the case. And if it is, I would just suggest that people uh, who are interested in this at least direct people who are you know online to that. Because going to Mike's, you know, I, I know people who have not set foot in a grocery store. So, um, yeah. Anyway, I, but I, maybe I, I, is it? Sorry. Would it be a good thing to perhaps hold more in, or not hold more, but maybe print more? They do run out at those stores in years past. Also, that they're not there when you go to grab one, and. Would it be in the best interest of making sure that you're really providing information in the most user friendly way to the public possible beforehand? Um, maybe reserve a few more at Damon Hall that if someone requests one mail, they could make a request. Then you wouldn't have to incur the postage for the whole town who may not read it anyway. But if someone really wants a hard copy, they could pick one up or be mailed one. There, Rebecca, we've actually had. Uh, the last couple of years, we've had excess copies left here at Damon Hall. Okay, great. Yeah, so if they're out at, you know, we try and, uh, you know, when I first came here, they really flew out of mics, and we tried to stock them up pretty good and gave them extra, you know, it's just a matter of keeping it on the shelf. Uh, recently, the last two years, the real hot spot's actually been um, the post office here in the village. Uh, we try and keep them stocked. There may be, you know, uh, a brief time, an afternoon or a day that uh, they may not be there, but um, they're they're always available at Damon Hall just because that's where the 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 inventory is. Great. So, and we've actually had we've cut down a little bit on the extras, but um, you know I'm talking a couple hundred extras, not a light amount. I'm just in Matt's camp. More information going out so that people feel well informed going into something that's a very different process. I think will will be a win for everybody. Okay. Anything else? Um, I just want to clarify something. This might be okay, an oversight for a second. Um, the informational meeting you gave us a date as April twenty fourth. And then the there's a mailer that says that announces the warrant and everything. And then we have a town report that will be available. Dave, you said late April. Um, my hope is that means before April 24th. That is correct. OK, good. Just checking. Yep. So it'll go out like uh, usually hits the stores a week before um, the meeting itself. The meeting that, and, and when we say the meeting, we mean April 24th, the informational thing. The that is, yes, that is correct. Thank you, Rebecca. Okay, good. Yeah. Dave, I would, whatever we send out with the ballots, though, I assume there's going to be a cover page of some kind that that could reference that there will be, that the you know information on the individual articles would be on the website or in those locations. So that'll that'll be on um, Matt. That'll be on the mailer. Um, the, the website the, link as well. I, I don't know exactly what's going to be on the ballots, but I think that's going to be pretty straightforward. Um, directions to the ballots, directions on how to bring them back, et cetera. Kind of two different processes. Okay, but that mailer hasn't gone out y yet. Okay. Right. Okay. okay. I'm just just catching up on the sequencing of it. Just whatever it is would give all the locations plus that they can find it online at yep. whatever so, link. Yep. So let me clarify for the board, Matt and, and Rebecca. So you guys, so what we just did was approve the warning. The warning goes in both the mailer and the town report. The mailer will go out on or about the first week of, of April. It's got budget information for both the town and the school. It's got some general information on the town and the school, and it's gonna have the warning for the town and the school. So you're gonna see our 31 articles, and you're gonna see the school's seven articles or whatever. Okay, and both of those warnings uh, has information on the public information meeting, uh, how to access it. 
uh, on the outside cover of the mailer is where it says, you know, towards the end of April or, or whatever general time, um, you know, the, the town report will be available in those five locations that we put it. And we can say, and I, it may even, uh, I think it says, you know, it's also available online at heartland.gov or, or whatever it is. Um, so that goes out the 1st of April and it's got the basic information. It does not have the appropriation, you know, all 30, 28 appropriation, you know, updates or, or letters that's in the town report. But the, and the mailer doesn't go out to all, everybody in town, it goes out to registered voters. That's a big distinction. But I think we're up to like 3,000 registered voters at this point. Uh, and it goes, it goes to the household of the registered voters. So if, you know, Matt and Sarah, you'd get one to your address. Uh, you know, Tom and Mary would get one to their address type thing. You know, so it, it gets clustered that way. We have the ability to do it. Uh, and then before ta uh, the informational meeting, the town report will hit the newsstand, so to speak, um, you know, before town meet, uh, before the public informational meeting, uh, and certainly before the vote on May 4th. Okay, are we good? Any other questions? Okay, um, so to move along, we, we are going to have an executive session, but I have a suggestion here. We have Steve Cohen sitting here who is has an interest in the Planning Commission. It seemed like an opportunity to just have a just a very brief uh, um, word from you, Steve, about, about maybe your, your interest and your your qualifications if you'd like to i'll be happy to so you're going to get it right from the bottom of my feet um as, as some of you know um i my wife my late wife and i retired up here um, my family has is historically from from Heartland. i'm i'm a webster and on my mother's side and as i was going through the transition into retirement um i was interested in getting involved in in heartland uh, that was delayed a little as uh, my wife um, had als and i became her um, caregiver and uh, i've now if you will um moved past that and in, in participating, the opportunity was presented on the Hartman listserv. I responded to that. I attended a meeting. I'm interested in participating in in the commission. As far as qualifications are concerned, I would say that um, my qualifications have been primarily uh, as a, a volunteer or a leader in not not profit organizations and more specifically uh, through um, a, a reasonable amount of administrative experiences in higher education. Uh, as far as um, the, the administrative experiences, it did give me opportunity to certainly to plan, organize, set goals, much of what I think would be inherent in this commission. I'd be happy to entertain any questions or clarifications. That would be fine. Thank you for volunteering. It's wonderful. You're welcome. Yes. Thank you. Any, any questions for Steve or anyone? I guess you did a good job, Steve. Uh, that wasn't very interesting. 
No, you've got a good background, and just your willingness to to serve is uh, highly commendable. And then, of course, you've got the Heartland connection from way back. So, great. I'm in there for sure. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. So uh, we are going to enter executive session with a few um, subjects, three different things that need to be discussed. Um, which I could list as the Coley property agreement, the uh, community nurse agreement, and the agreement with uh, Able Waste about the parking parking lot. My so, time. To talk. Yes, Steve. My time to leave. Uh, yes, yes. Hey, <laughs> Steve, I just want to, Steve and Gordon, I just want to point out uh, the next meeting or the meeting, you'll, you'll actually need to make an official motion to appoint him. Um, well, I, I knew we were going to do that later. Okay, I just wanted to make sure yeah. that was. Uh, uh, yeah, not until uh, April meeting. Okay. That was the plan. Yeah, and I don't know. Um, you usually get a, a very brief resume. I don't know whether we should ask you for that or not, Steve. Uh, would you like that, Dave, for our records? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, he, he gave his little spiel tonight, but uh, generally uh, going into the meeting that you're going to be appointed, we ask for a little blurb on your yeah. background and, and interest. So. Um, uh, I'll probably I'll, I'll reach out to you, Steve, and try and get something from you. Just to, it usually goes in your packet before the meeting for the appointment, um, just to be consistent, I guess. I'm comfortable with that. Okay, yeah. thank you. Good. Okay, well, um, moving on. Uh, we do need to. Um, Enter executive session with our usual motion. Martha, do you have that? Yes. I make a motion that executive session is necessary because premature general public knowledge would clearly place the public body or a person involved at a substantial disadvantage. So we need. I'm yep. just feeling, figuring out how to log off. Bye. Exactly. <laughs> so do we have a second on that? I seconded it. I'm Curtis. Thank you, Curtis. Okay. Um, I guess we, we don't have to discuss this. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Curtis, aye. And I will make a second motion yep. that the select board go into executive session based on one VSA state statute 313-1A. I will second that. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Heard aye. aye. All right, thank you. Uh, we have exited executive session. And we have some decisions to uh, make uh, to uh, pass motions on. So we'll start. Um, let's let's work backwards, okay? Because that's most familiar. Let's do the able waste first. Okay. That's all right. No, um, notice lipo, right? Last in, first out. <laughs> so I would move that we approve the town of heartland winter trails parking lease with able waste management with the provision that the yearly period of lease will be ex extended to october 1st that sounds is that is that complete enough dave yep yeah. i'll start this second thank you uh, all in favor Mary, aye. 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 Who, sec who seconded that? Uh, I no. did. I did. Oh, okay, thank you. Okay, uh, and then we will move to um, 
community nurse agreement? Can we refer to this as the contracted case manager agreement? Yes. In the, certainly in the motion, yes. So I thought we weren't doing a motion on this. Yeah, I thought we decided not to take action, Gordon. You are right. You are right. We're going to let that one settle, to, uh, um, settle down until next meeting. Um, because we have issues there. We have we really don't know just what we're doing. Okay. And that brings <laughs> us to where did it go? I lost my stuff. That brings us to the Coley property. There we go. All right. I would like to I make a motion to approve the legal agreement between the town of Heartland and Joyce Coley landowner and direct Dave Ormiston. I'll give you all this, Martha. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And direct Dave Ormiston, town manager, to proceed with bringing the matter to its conclusion. Uh, the, the last part's a little awkward, but I will second. Dave, what do you think? Is that what you wanted to say? I got a little distracted because I was looking at my can of Guinness here, but uh, I think that that sounds about right. I can read it again, Dave. Well, he wants it to be a little warmer because tradition <laughs> has it you have to drink that warm. So. That's right. Are you going to email that to me, Mary? Yes, I am, Martha. Thank you very much. I, I think that uh, I, you got to just read the second, the last part of that. Okay. I started to wander there. And direct Dave Ormison, town manager, to proceed with bringing the matter to its conclusion. Sounds good. Perfect. Okay. Um, Curtis, you seconded that? Yeah. Okay. Guess we don't need to discuss. Okay, all in favor of that? Mary, aye. Uh, aye. Aye. Okay. Very good. 